Hello, everyone. We will get started in just a moment. If you guys could all please do me a favor and go down to that bottom right hand bubble. Like and retweet the space. Let's get this shared out. This is going to be an interesting one, right? And a very bullish one as well. Um, We are waiting in our uh, AMA guests to come in. I see we already have the layer one profile in the space. I think we are waiting on crypto not. So, yeah, we will get started in just a second. How are you doing today, Chris? I'm doing well. This is going to be a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's been like a, a super busy and, and pretty bullish day. There's a space going on right now that's been going on for like four hours on what I'm kind of bullish on today. Uh, I think I've been sharing it a lot lately. Uh, and this is kind of related to that. But yeah, um, yeah, can't wait to get into this one. Yeah, 2023 is wrapping up. So I think people are getting a last minute big pushes in. Yeah, not not only big pushes, but it seems like a lot of tech is rolling out. And I don't know if it was by design or if it just took right until now for everyone to get done with it. Um, uh, but a lot of interesting tech is coming out. Uh, had a, another bullish meeting that I'll, I'll talk to you kind of off basis about. Uh, but yeah, we, we are a lot closer um, in the Web3 Digital ID space to getting exactly uh, what we want utility-wise. And, and that... That is actually super bullish and super exciting. Um, yeah, but again, uh, I don't know where Cody's at. If uh, somebody could go find him so we can go ahead and get started, that would be awesome. Yeah, how about yourself, sir? Um, how's the day been? I know you were on a space with me earlier. Yeah, yeah, this is a, a rather laid back Friday. Um... I, I do. It's, it's, you know, it's the end of the years, you know, fourth quarter for a lot of people. So, and I'm just, I'm doing what you're doing. I'm watching, keeping up and excited about what I'm seeing unfold. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I see we've got Cody on crypto. Not how are you doing today, sir? You ready to get into this? I am. How are you? I am doing good. It, it has been a, a busy day. Uh, spaces, meetings all day, all morning. Have some more after this, and then I'm still going to find some time to drive around, look at Christmas lights. Um, I got in that portal pre sale, so I'm pretty happy about that because, uh, yeah, I like games. <laughs> um, nice. And yeah, uh, once again, just want to remind everybody as you're coming into the space, if you could please go down to the bottom right hand corner, 
like and retweet. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them down there. Also, if anybody wants to come up and ask any questions, this is an AMA. So we do invite you to do so. Um, I have pinned a couple of things up to the top. Um, one of them being a tweet that you guys sent out earlier today. So that is an awesome one about your Web3 identity. Uh, and then another, um, you know, kind of, uh, I had an introduction to the platform, was able to make my first swap. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about that as well. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Perfect. Uh, so without further ado, I, I would like to welcome everyone to another iHeart Domains Tech Talk AMA, where we highlight and deep dive with builders, entrepreneurs, and visionaries in the Web3 digital ID and domain space in the Web3 tech space. Um, as always, our tech talks are recorded, uh, so you'll be able to uh, listen back to them here on Twitter as well as on our content content archive. It's always like a tongue twister, bro. Uh, content archive at link3.to forward slash iHeart or forward slash DeFi wallet, uh, or you can view our content archive at iHeartDomains.com, uh, as well as on every uh, major podcast player, including Apple and Spotify. So yeah, we give we give people quite a few uh, places to listen back to these spaces and get this alpha. Um, again, please like and retweet. Um, as always, I encourage everyone who is interested in anything they hear here uh, to uh, and who needs more info to join their community directly. Um, as always, do your own research, and our AMAs are not financial advice. Um, and yeah, uh, with that being said, as I uh, just uh, got finished saying, I got the chance to demo uh, Layer 1X last night, uh, including going fully through a swap and minting my very own uh, Web3 digital identity. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm not sure how many others have done a cross-chain swap before, but this was like literally my first time, so um, I was pretty impressed with it. Um, I've actually curated some questions to help us dive in uh, more with the Layer 1X platform uh, so we can learn how this all works, so I can learn uh, exactly what I just did. Uh, so first and foremost, we are blessed to have Kryptonaut, a.k.a. Cody, on board. Uh, I want to start with you formally introducing yourself, uh, your background, and, and kind of a brief overview of what Layer 1X is. Yeah, for sure. Uh, thank you again for having us uh, back on. Uh, I know we were on, I think, last week for a panel discussion that you had. So that was fun. But uh, we do appreciate you having us back so that we can do a deeper dive into what we're working on technology wise. Uh, to introduce myself, my name is Cody. I'm the CXO. And if you're unfamiliar with us, what a CXO is, I'm the Chief Experience Officer. Uh, here at uh, blockchain layer one called layer one X. Uh, layer one X uh, basically uh, launched our Genesis block, uh, which is if you're unfamiliar with what a Genesis block is, the Genesis block is the very first block in a blockchain. And we launched that on in August. And uh, we are in what's known as mainnet beta. We're kind of doing things a little bit different than what most blockchain projects have done in the past, rather than um, basically raising funds and then going and building the project over the next two to three years. We've done the reverse and we've actually built the project over the last two and a half years, three, almost three years. And uh, as a result of that, we've we've been kind of going through our private round, seed round, private sale. And now we are currently in the public sale phase of our, our project. Um, and uh, just to kind of give you a little insight into what Layer 1X is, uh, we are the first interoperable blockchain built to make multi-chain uh, technology and decentralized networks accessible to everybody. So what does that mean? Um, basically, we are a chain that's built to unite uh, all of the different chains, allowing them to have total true interoperability without the use of a bridge. And you mentioned bridges earlier. Uh, yes, I can remember my first bridge experience uh, back in, oh gosh, I can't remember the year, but <laughs> I was a little little minnow in, the, in terms of uh, being an investor. But uh, I remember my first trade was a couple of grand and I was sweating bullets trying to use a bridge because it took forever and worrying about if I was going to get my money and the fees and everything. So um, as soon as I saw the technology that was being built with L1X, it uh, definitely made me want to jump. And one of the main reasons was uh, I got to see the 
opportunity for where it could go and how it could provide a solution to address a lot of the the challenges that not only are blockchains facing but users are are facing as well uh, with uh, scaling decentralization interoperability and security and so um, as soon as I saw the tech of L1X, I became extremely bullish on what they were doing and uh, wanted to get involved. And so that's how I started about a year ago with them. And since then, we have made some great strides, made some crypto firsts. For an example, in March of this year, we did our first EVM to non-EVM uh, uh, swap without the use of a bridge. Um, and so if you want to watch that real time, you can look on our Twitter handle. We've got that recorded for you guys to, to kind of look at as well. So that's kind of us, uh, in, in a nutshell, we, uh, have a couple of big claim to fames. One is X talk, which is our interoperability technology that we've built, which I could, I'll dive into a little bit more. The next one is digital identity and data, um, management for the user. And we'll talk about more about that as well. And then the last one that I like is the universal gas fee token that comes with our L1X coin. And uh, that will definitely be a game changer when we go and fully launch in, um, do, do a main net full launch in the end of January. So that's when our tokens, or excuse me, our coins will basically become fully tradable and everything will be turned on. Okay, so there's definitely a, a, an opportunity now for everybody being uh, early. And before we go any further, it's never uh, too late to right or wrong. I do want to introduce my amazing co-host. He is always here uh, sharing in the alpha and asking amazing questions. How are you doing today? Go ahead and introduce yourself formally, Chris, so everyone knows who you are. Well, my name is Chris. I am the strategy director for Namer Tips. As Ihar said, I have the privilege of being the co-host in these wonderful spaces and, you know, learning about how Web3 is growing and being introduced to a lot of visionaries and great minds in the space. And it's, it's interesting. I'm glad that we had this introduction into Layer 1X because the interoperability thing is really, it's, it's heavily discussed, right? But the way that it was just explained in terms of the direction Layer 1X is going with it, it sounds really promising, and I'm looking forward to learning more about it. Yeah, me as well. Um, going back to kind of um, like my experience as well. So I, I actually came into the space uh, extremely what do you, adventurous. I, uh, I started off on other blockchains, experimenting with things like AVAX and Phantom, um, uh, all those other things, trying to chase the next pump. And so I, I, I became familiar with bridging very early and it was a pain those same fears wondering if you're going to get your money on the other side sometimes it taking a day or two or having to wait for liquidity on the other end having to find the right bridges and, and i remember thinking at that point like this would be impossible for for most people to learn and even now with some time between having to do that i've forgotten completely how to even bridge like when i need tokens on another chain i literally send it back to a hot wallet exchange it there and then send it back. Um, so the, the prospect of being able to do this in one interface is amazing. And I'm, I'm really curious of the tech that happens kind of behind the scenes since you're eliminating that whole process. Uh, so again, like the L1X platform, it, 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 it seems to serve the purpose of that one-stop shop for anybody that's wanting to trade those tokens. Can you explain how that tech works and, you know, obviously how it would make life easier for people coming into the blockchain that don't understand really how difficult it is to inter to work with different blockchains and different tokens? Yeah, yeah, no problem. So a lot of that has to do with our, our in-house technology that we're building, right? And so a lot of this we're going to keep under the hood um, because it's all proprietary, right? And so... Um, However, the, the way we want to focus on developing this technology is, is that we want people to, um, no matter the level that they're at, uh, if they're a newbie all the way to a veteran or even a dev, we want them to be able to jump in and be able to participate, right? And so uh, you'll, he you'll hear me use that term under the hood quite a bit. That's my favorite phrase to use <laughs> over the years. Um, I've been doing... Um, this kind of work for 
software development, uh, specifically in the SaaS world for almost two decades now. So um, it's been kind of nice to kind of bridge that over to what we're doing here as well. But when it comes in terms of the tech, there's a lot of moving com components to how we make this work. And so to get not too technical, um, it, it basically allows us to um, kind of uh, use contracts. We can communicate and we can facilitate not only uh, the transfer of value of tokens and, and things like that, but we can also transfer data and logic. And that's where a lot of this comes into play with the tech is, is our ability to communicate between the two chains and get them to talk. And so um, in a nutshell, that's basically how we're, how we're doing it. Um, but uh, yeah, sorry, I can't go too deep on that, but uh, hopefully that kind of wets your whistle a little yeah, bit. <laughs> no, I was going to say, I, I definitely understand. And um, uh to, to explain to people kind of how easy the process was for me or, or how that process went, I took some BNB &B from BNB &B chain and I switched it to Matic. So I, I did a simple swap with an interface that was just as easy to use as a Uniswap or anything else. Um, and, and it did the trade right there in the same speed that it would with the same transaction amounts that it would in order to do that kind of swap. And, and I ended up with Matic and Polygon. Uh, in that side of my wallet. Uh, so whatever you've got going on in the back end, uh, it definitely works and, and it's set to revolutionize the space. Uh, and I want to kind of talk to you. Uh, so we, we started with the tech first and we're going to kind of go to the opportunity alpha last in this last so, portion. Uh, but on the last part of the tech, I, I do want to talk about uh, people building on the chain. Yeah. Uh, I'll go for so it. So I, I was just going to tell you, one of the things that has helped us with security and speed is, is that we're not leveraging the uh, Ethereum EVM um, consensus. We have actually built our own EVM machines um, from the ground up. And so that's why we're able to do the speed that we can across chain. So just to kind of give you a little bit of perspective into, into some of that technology. Okay. Uh, Chris, you had a question? Yeah, you know, it, it's funny because he dived right off into security. I was just getting ready to ask about that because the, the tech sounds great, right? Building from the ground up under the hood. I, I love that phrase. Um, would you would you mind going into, you know, a a, for lack of better words, the security pitch? Like, you know, what makes this particular chain secure right because you know in this space you hear a lot of people lead with security and so on and so forth and there's a lot that has happened in the recent days with respect to security and i think this will be a great time to go into what layer one x offers with regard to security and you know reinforcing people's confidence in using the the the, the product the service the chain and so on yeah for sure um so you know a lot of it when it comes to the security of it it boils down to the amount of nodes that are being ran right um, and so for us, we have three different types of nodes that are being ran on the blockchain. Um, there's uh, basically like your full validator nodes, there's listening nodes, and then we also have mobile. Um, you can be a mobile validator. So anybody can download the app, uh, which will be available soon, um, and become a mobile validator, which we have kind of tapped into. I know there's been some other networks that have talked about that security of uh, being able to add in nodes uh, from a mobile perspective but we were the first kind of the first ones to really fully implement that into our whole blockchain infrastructure along with that we've got some other things that are um, you know we use the the top uh, encryption hash uh, procedures for us to make sure that the data is uh, securely hashed properly um, there's a lot of different things. I could throw out some pretty big words, but half of it I can't even pronounce anyways. But uh, we've we've taken precautions on that. Likewise, we have a couple of different um, things where we can do a, a hybrid model off of ours for private chains. Um, those private chains are kind of more for governments, big businesses, things like that. And the cool perspective about that is, is that it allows you to, private chains can communicate with the public chain and uh but not vice versa right so 
Um, where that comes into play with the amount of security that we're doing is that it's really focused on building that whole digital identity and being able to provide the uh, control and management of a user's data and giving that control back to the user. And so that's where the ultimate security comes because the way that we're building it, it's almost like we're building a moat around not only your data, but your wallet and everything like that. And so then as you're connecting with these different projects and and uh, from healthcare to DeFi to your games and things like that, you will be in control of what kind of data you want to share with, with the people uh, and the projects, as well as being able to potentially monetize off of your data as well. So that's where a lot of the different security components start working together and, and kind of making that forward motion that, that we like to talk about as well is uh, how, we're, how that's all going to come to a head in Web3 with that security data as well. I'm glad I'm glad you stated that and you talked about putting the control in the hands of the users because you you know we, we're on the same frequency today because when you referenced the medical records that was the first thing that came to mind because I visited you all's this website and was pretty intrigued by what it was that I combed through so I'm glad to hear you state that and that's why I asked that question would you mind breaking it down because I don't think a lot of um, you know the everyday users that will hopefully embrace the chain, I think that is going to be important for them to know that they do have that control. So thank you for highlighting. Yeah. That. Yeah. And I think it's important to, to also note that there's a lot of uh, different projects out there um, from layer ones to uh, layer twos uh, that are basically claiming to be focused on uh, decentralization of digital identities. And that's great. But when you peel back the onion of what this whole thing is that we're working on with this digital identity, the true value really in lies in the ambiguous decentralized ownership of non-physical assets as well. But being able to do that across multiple chains and not just one chain. So let me, re let me restate that again. Decentralized identity is only gonna be valuable when it can be done across multiple, multiple chains in a decentralized manner. So, and I think that we're well on our way there because of our ability to do true interoperability between the different chains right now, so. Yeah, so you're, you're definitely building into the, the bigger picture that we on the Web3 ID side are, are are kind of campaigning for it. And obviously, you know, some of the protocols and platforms have each other in the way of achieving that, uh, which is why I'm glad that we have builders who are still building the infrastructure and the tech on the back end to achieve it anyway. 100%. Um, and I actually kind of want to get into that in a little bit. Uh, for those of you who are just now joining in, I uh, want to welcome you guys to our iHeart Domains Tech Talk. We have our guests, Layer 1X and Cody, who is a CXO. Uh, giving us all the alpha on the multi-chain, cross-chain uh, uh, platform blockchain that they have built. Uh, we are uh, kind of wrapping up some of our tech questions, and then we're actually going to get into some of those digital identity questions. Uh, but I want to talk about the the builder, the tech ecosystem itself. Uh, so aside from you know the benefit of users of being able to to do cross-chain swaps, uh, what are the benefits for for builders? Uh, why would a builder uh, you know, rather than building in the traditional environments that they're building in the one chain, I'm here, create the maxi environment and then roll from there. Um, what kind of benefits does this offer to builders? What kind of things can be built? And then what's an example of how, you know, your utility improves uh, what they may currently be used to, like I said, being stuck on one chain? Yeah. Um, so a lot of projects, uh, you know, they, they kind of paint themselves into a corner, uh, depending on the chain that they use. Um, if that chain gets adopted by other people or users and projects, it really depends on the growth of the chain, which will hinder or basically make your, your project grow, right? And so um, sometimes it's, a, it's playing roulette when you roll and try to make it uh, a project and, and knowing where to put that project on and which chain is going to be met, most beneficial for you is, is kind of a feat in itself. But um, by building on layer 1x, 
uh, it will automatically give you um, that interoperability play from the second that you sign up and start working and building on on our platform, meaning that you'll be able to tap into not only the, the users of various chains, but also the TDL of those chains. Um, you can communicate with the different smart contracts across the board. As I mentioned before, you could have a, a smart contract on Ethereum, uh, communicate with a smart contract on BNB. Uh, you could also make it so that uh, um, you could do multiple, uh, like I said, under the hood, uh, let's just say uh, I wanted to send you a full Ethereum, but I only had half of Ethereum on Ethereum and I had half of a wrapped Ethereum on BNB. Well, I'm a huge fan of having smart wallets. And so if you had a smart wallet on layer 1X, you could still send that one Ethereum, but it would take half of that Ethereum that you had on Ethereum and swap out the wrapped Ethereum bridge it over and give it a true Ethereum and send Ethereum, one Ethereum to you all with one click, right? And so those are the kind of functions and features that you could start building, which not only increases the usability of uh, your product and service, but also the user experience then goes through the roof and it's all decentralized, right? And so I'm a huge fan of uh, basically stating that good user experience good ui design does not have to be hindered or or uh, deterred away because you're trying to inject decentralization into it in fact you could have the same user experience with a centralized experience that you would experience on like a uh an exchange or you know one of these other types of projects that's all centralized man that's amazing go for it chris I, I'm loving this because, you know, he just stated that he just stated what I think a lot of us in the Web3 space have the ones who understand where this is really, really going. He just stated that the technicality does not have to outweigh the practicality and that practicality. I mean, the way kudos on breaking that down the way that you, the way that you did. Now, I'm curious, you know, so the builders clearly have a reason, mm -hmm. right? Um, do, does Layer 1X plan to offer any formal incentives to, uh, you know, basically attract builders, formally attract them to building on the chain? Is that something in the cards? Oh, 100 percent. I'm glad you brought that up. How does 20 million dollars in grants sound? Jeez, that sounds pretty good. If someone is actually bringing some solid projects <laughs> to the table. Wow. Yeah. So I need to send over my wallet. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So we've got a great uh, grants program for anybody that's interested in, in building on Layer 1X. Um, we've actually given away some of it already. Um, we've given it away to a couple of game, I believe a gaming platform um, and a few other major projects that we feel are, are true innovators in the interoperability Web3 space. And so you can definitely uh, go to our website and apply for one of those grants. Um, it is open, I believe. I don't know if this has been announced yet, but I'm going to announce it anyways. I believe it's been extended. We were going to cut it off at the end of January when we go mainnet live. However, I believe that we've extended that until June of 2024. Yeah, this is a, a, an amazing opportunity for all of you builders out there. Um, as I mentioned in our, our last Tech Talk, uh, going into 2024, I'm going to be connecting with a lot more ecosystem partners, a lot more uh, uh, people who are building real tech, uh, so that our builders who are building in our in our space in digital ID, um, in, in regular domains or whatever, um, you know, can start building on this tech and, and getting this alpha early um, as we're continuing to expand our space. Um, I do want to touch on some digital ID, though, because you guys have an interesting ecosystem and, and um, uh, well, what would you say? Uh, uh, the word program is coming to my mind, so I'm just going to say it. But you have an interesting program around how you're handling uh, uh, identity within your own platform. You referenced it a couple of times. Um, you guys have a username and a space card system, which is actually kind of like an index of information, essentially, like we were talking about. And, and we've often speculated. Uh, you know, in our spaces and in the, you know, all the other Web3 domain spaces, 
uh, that one day, you know, this username that we, we were using as our Twitter handle that, that, you know, we're using as our alpha flex will one day be also used to connect to medical records, be able to connect to other pieces of vital information. Um, and yeah, I think you've pretty much created that within your ecosystem. So, so tell us a little bit more about your username and space cards. Um, what are they and yeah, how do they benefit uh, the user that's coming into the ecosystem? Yeah, so I mean, in true fashion of what web the merge from web two to web three is, um, getting that all decentralized, putting the control of the data back into the consumer or the user's hands is is vital, right, to the success of that web three migration. And so that is our primary focus with the uh, the web three username NFTs. And so if you know anything about an NFT, a lot of people just think that NFTs are all about just, you know, uh, weird random photos that sell for thousands of dollars type of things. But there are a lot more different type of uh, utilities that you can actually put behind an NFT. And so one of those that we're doing is just we're putting the username as an NFT and for a variety of different reasons, the main reason that we're doing that is so that we can build that moat around not only the user's identity and data, but also their wallet and um, basically provide them with a interface um, to or a gateway into our ecosystem. I don't think that there's any other blockchain that's done that. They've relied on projects to build on top of them to start providing views or access to their blockchain. Um, however, we're doing things a little bit different, as I've mentioned before, is we've created a thing called L1X app. And that L1X app is a great uh, place for a username to be uh, established. And the reason why you want to establish your username now is so that you can use it down the road for things like social media, a website, um, medical records, uh, gaming profiles. Um, it's endless on what you can do with it. You can also break it down uh, in a user name uh, you can use as a work. Uh, you can break that down into work. You can break it down into investor, your, your own personal use. It's really endless on what you can do with it. And we're combining those into what we call space cards. And those space cards are where you're going to be able to attach those uh, to the different DeFi projects so that you can segment that data out. Um, and then again, if I was to, uh, going back to that analogy that I gave where I was transferring, you know, one Ethereum, maybe I was buying something from you in real life. Uh, I could transfer that information to you. Um, and then from there, once we make that transaction, I can revoke that information so that you don't have to see it. Maybe there was a decentralized bill of sell that was auto-generated because of our transaction. Um, I can have that bill of sale cr generated, created based upon the information that I shared from my digital ID. And then once that's done, revoke the access that you would have to be able to see that. Although you and I would be the only ones that would be able to see that at this point in time. Um, it's just endless on what you can do with those digital IDs. And yes, we feel like the digital ID is definitely going to be the gateway to the Web3 experience. And to kind of cultivate that Web3 experience and build upon it, within the L1X app, how we're doing this is we're actually putting the user in control of how they want to view and digest that information that they receive. So today in the Web2 experience, we... Um, go to a specific platform to engage with people like on Twitter, for an example. Uh, we go to a specific website to read or to make a purchase. Well, what if both of those use cases are literally um, put into widget form of the different components that are onto a website or a social media platform like a post or a tweet? Um, what if those can be pulled into a feed where the user has control over their own algorithm so that they don't have to see recommended or ads from that platform. Um, or if they want to see a specific, maybe uh, reoccurring product that they purchase all the time, they can bring that product into their own kind of like marketplace view where they can go in and create 
a uh, quick toggle where they can buy that product at any time. Or if they want to see news from a specific outlet, they can pull that into their own kind of feed structure. And that's what we call spaces. And so really what it is, is designing it in such a fluid way so that the user can not only experience Web 2, but they can import their Web 2 data to build out their Web 3 user profile. And then from there, then they can start building upon that and using that data to build out their Web 3 experience. So a, a, a lot of people are going to listen back to this AMA and realize that you just spelled out the what is still the future of digital identity or even understanding what it could be for most of them. And, and it's amazing that you've already built that out or in the process of building that out and thinking that forward ahead in your platform and that it's multi-chain and cross-chain. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very rarely at a loss for words, but yeah, go for it, Chris. Yeah. I'm, I'm hearing, you know, fluid accessibility and a frictionless user experience. That's, that's what I'm hearing. And it's, you know, I love that digital identity is being used, right? Because, you know, in, in, in the Web3 space, you hear a lot of people, they kind of mix the worlds of domain names and digital identity, and they use them interchangeably. And so this is refreshing to hear digital identity being referenced, right? It's being honed in on. But then it also has the supporting elements of what's being offered that reiterate that that's what this is about it is about digital identity i love the example regarding the widgets right because if we look at digital identity i think the the thing that we should definitely use as an example is the way that people live their lives how do people interact with their data how do they interact with others and to be able to create a way for them to interact with one another in digital fashion, similar to how they do in a real world, if not better. I think that that just makes for that seamless experience that was just being referenced. So this this is exciting and, and I'm looking forward to everything that's coming from, I'm looking forward to it. I'm enthused, you could probably <laughs> tell from my words of being jumbled up. I love it, I love it. it we call it the symbiotic um, relationship between human and machine, right? Um, it's that fluidness where the line's been blurred um, kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, I, I also wanted to ask a, a, another question in relation to the usernames. Uh, yeah. So there, there's a process currently to acquire a username, and, and I'd like you to walk us through it because it actually comes with uh, some additional benefits. When a, when a person enters your ecosystem in this way, they, they truly enter your ecosystem and um, – I believe the cost of the username itself or the cost of entering the ecosystem that way um, also will entitle you to some governance, right, governance rights uh, and all kinds of other perks that come along with, you know, kind of being early to your to your platform. Uh, kind of break that down because I know there's a lot to what you guys have going on and a lot of the perks and incentives for early users. Yeah, so I'll kind of start with uh, the, the seed and private cell, public cell that we're currently in, right? So many people can jump in and purchase the L1X coin directly from here by just simply swapping um, any of the chains that we are currently connected to. You can swap that into uh, <coughs> gather L1X coins. Uh, you can purchase it that way, which is a great, great way to do it. Um, likewise, uh, that can be done across chain, right? So another perk there as well. Um, the, uh, with the L1X coin, we wanted for a lot of our investors, we wanted to do something that was unique that a lot of L1 uh, layer ones don't do. And we wanted to reward a lot of our early investors. So we came up with a couple of different things that we, uh, wanted to do for them. So one thing is, is that they can stake their L1X coins before mainnet launch and earn other incentives so uh we are building in for an example we're building into this l1x app a launch pad and if you're familiar with what a launch pad if you're not familiar with what a launch pad is a launch pad is a is a great opportunity for newer projects to jump on and kind of promote themselves think of it as kind of like a shark tank kind of thing where they can come in they can get on they can pitch their project and then um, from there, investors can jump in and get in early on these uh, projects, 
which are very beneficial uh, a lot of times. And then other times they're not, but at least there's a good opportunity for people to see what's coming up and get in early. Uh, so that by staking your L1X coins, you get early access to that launch pad for the projects that will be coming onto the L1X platform. Uh, along with other staking perks, you get bonus reward tokens at mainnet launch. Uh, there's there's lots of different things there as well. And then along the way, uh, we also wanted to give people the opportunity that believe in the project access to be able to share in the fees generated from the L1X app and all of the functions and features that are going to be coming into this ecosystem, right? So... Currently, we have the uh, the swap widget, which is on the L1X app. So uh, there's a couple of different options there. You can participate and basically create and own your own widget. It's a white-labeled version of the widget that it, developers can put onto their projects. Um, and you can earn, I believe it's up to 20% of the fees generated through that, through a rev share. Uh, likewise, if you... Um, purchase an NFT uh, for the L1X app NFT, you will get a username with it. Um, but that NX, that excuse me, that L1X app NFT basically gives you ownership rights to the fees that are generated through the L1X app itself. And so you can imagine we're only starting right now. Uh, we do have the swap coming we are introducing gaming into this. We are also introducing social media kind of stuff into this, health stuff. It's going to be endless on the different things that will be put into this. But uh, think of it as kind of like uh, an operating system for the L1X blockchain. Yeah, um, super excited for that. And that the, we've already spoken before and... Do not be surprised if you see that swap end up on the iHeartDomains.com website. I, I truly believe that the user interface, ease of entry, ease of all this stuff is what will um, uh, what will drive adoption. Um, and again, my experience with the swap was, was very easy. Uh, I think anybody could use it. Um, so yeah, looking forward to that. And I, and I love that revenue sharing opportunity that you're giving people not only uh, to be able to use utilize that option if they have web properties like that, but um, you know, also giving people, you know, that, that option to share in the revenue just by entering the ecosystem. Uh, yep. I see we have a couple. And, uh, oh, hold on just oh. one sec. The, the last thing I want to add is the third leg to this revenue stream. So even if you come in, you don't buy your NFT uh, to the L1X app or you don't, you know, uh, create your own widget type of thing. Um, just by signing up and creating an account, you'll get a referral link. And you can just share that referral out to your crypto friends and your crypto friends as they come in, you'll earn, I think it's five to 10% of what they do on the app for life. Um, I have a question. Is there a limit to the amount of widgets no. that a person can, can deploy or, or embed into a website? Uh, that's up to the partnership group. I haven't heard anything, but um, on that one specific, it's uh, right now it's a case by case basis. So that I couldn't tell you. Sorry. Uh, and the, my and the guess is no. <laughs> well, the reason why I'm asking, and I'm, I'm kind of, a, what do you call it, pre pitching this opportunity. Um, but you, you do have a lot of people that, that are in my community that invest in, in Web2 domains, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Some of us have domains that are related to cryptocurrency, and some of us plan on deploying landing pages on them, monetizing them by using them as uh, parking pages, et cetera. And, you know, some of these properties, even though, uh, like, for instance, um, well, I'm not going to give an example, but if there was a good example out there of a website that would attract traffic for a swap and, and a person had multiple of those in their portfolio, that might be a good income generating opportunity for that person if you guys allow it. Uh, set those up as landing pages. So, hey, maybe that opportunity is out there. I yep. see we've got Smart with your hand up. How you doing today? Yeah, I'm good. Thanks for bringing me up. Yeah, can you hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go for it. You got a question for Kryptonaut? Yeah, I do have a question. So, uh, it's concerning the N1S app. 
I notice it's not uh, really accessible on mobile. So I want to know, are there like uh, plans in the future to actually make it uh, mobile friendly? Because currently I can't access it. I'm being told I need to use a, a desktop with a minimum of 12 inch screen. Yeah, we are planning on bringing out actually a native mobile app for iOS and Android. Uh, that should be coming out very soon. Uh, I think the last time I heard is just that it was going to be possibly the end of January that that would be rolling out. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I want to also know, uh, will it be possible to link uh, our ID to like our social profiles like Twitter and uh, make and um, receive payments via them? Uh, yeah, we do have plans. We are building our own Oracle uh, system, which basically allows you to pull in your Web 2 data into your Web 3 uh, username and, and user identity. And so then that way we can you would basically just need to go to the L1X app, uh, create uh, your post, and that should that should be auto posted to your to your Twitter accounts. For an example, if you connect them, um, uh, that would be a, a simple way for you to kind of manage all of your social media platforms from one interface. All right, all right. That's just my question for now. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, uh, thank you for that question. And I do also extend an invitation to anybody else. If you guys want to come up and have any questions for them while they are on stage, feel free to request a speaker role. We will add you on up. And when you're up here, just go ahead and raise your hand and ask your question. Um, you mentioned uh, that you guys are in uh, somewhat of a beta stage. Um, so I uh, wanted you to explain kind of more about the stage you're in. Uh, what are the short term? and long-term uh, goals or roadmap looking like uh, for the project. So uh, for people that, that uh, are waiting for mainnet to go live, when, when is that planned, et cetera? Yeah, for sure. Like I said, we, we did things a little bit differently and I actually like the way that we've done it where we've, we've got uh, mainnet beta and during the six months that we were doing mainnet beta, our main objective is, is that we wanted to onboard as many different projects uh, major projects that we could that would basically highlight and um, showcase what our technology can do. Likewise, what we wanted to do with that too is start getting projects in that will start generating transactions for us. Um, the, the nice part about our transaction is, let's just say um, the reason why a lot of like e-commerce stuff really hasn't started taking off on, on um, blockchain is because of the cost. Right. And so like who wants to pay, uh, you know, $3 for a thing of coffee when it would cost them like five to six bucks to, to make the transaction happen on Ethereum. Right. It's not cost effective. And so that was the other thing that we looked at is, is that we wanted to make our platform very cost effective. And so, all of our transactions, if done on the L1X platform from L1X to L1X, is only one cent, no matter the size, no matter the um, you know time of day or anything like that, it will always be one cent. Um, however, if you're doing cross-chain swaps, don't forget you will always have the gas fees associated with that particular chain that you're transferring from along with uh, a one one cent fee on top of it right so and then whatever platform you're using you'll have those fees on top of that as well so you know as we as we kind of look at that um that trajectory of where we're we're headed i mean there's a lot of uh there's a lot of interesting stuff that we can do with it for sure yeah, and that, that, that sounds like a, an amazing opportunity. And I'm just, I, I'm thinking right now through the consumer process, you could literally just interact on your chain at one center transaction, all the builders build there, and then you could send your assets to whatever chain you needed to interact with them with. Um, yeah, yeah that, that definitely makes more sense because, uh, yeah, you're right. The, the biggest problem right now, well, besides from uh, the, the mass fluctuation in the value of most tokens, uh, but aside from that, yeah, there, there really is no no retail way uh, or to, to to interact with these tokens or, or to transact because the gas, the, it's just not there, right? I've seen a couple yeah. of attempts at it. Um, but yeah, uh, doing something like this, uh, 
creating a cheaper ecosystem that people can operate on that's multi-chain cross chain but it would definitely be a better uh, better step in the direction of uh, user you know, adoption. creating that user yeah. adoption creating that retail environment this is getting people to actually use cryptocurrency when people ask what will bring in the masses these use cases right people not everybody wants a picture um, not even everybody wants a username hopefully it'll be forced on them because they'll need it uh, but some people will just want cryptocurrency to interact and buy things and the easier people make that to do uh, the more the, the closer to reality that that will become that those people will come into the space uh, go for so, it Chris and then we'll go to June uh, oh we oh, I was just, about? yeah, I was just going to say, you know, a lot of people are very cautious about, um, you know, wanting to dox themselves with user, with like a username or a digital identity. Um, let me just kind of show you a use case. Like we want to protect your, your identity as much as you do. And so um, for an example, let's just say we brought on a game that uh, was kind of a blood guts gore kind of game. Um, and you had to be over 18 to play it, right? Um, we in, in Web 2 experience, a lot of times when you're playing those type of games, they'll ask for you to check mark a box to say that you're over 18 to view this site, or you have to enter in a birth date, which a lot of people just put in a fake, fake one anyway so that they can see it. Um, the way that we interact with our digital identities is that we can let that game know that you're 18 without really revealing your date of birth. It's kind of like, Hey, LNX, is this person 18? Yes. Okay, great. You can go through, right? Um, they don't even know anything about you except that you're over 18. That's how we plan yes, to yes. protect you guys. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's digging in, that's digging into DID being built kind of from the decentralized end, which is, you know, what, what we're hoping for. Go for it, Chris. Yeah. Okay. So this, this has been very intriguing. The one cent gas fee situation prompts this question. So you guys have created, I love the way that you all have your own ecosystem, but at the same time still embracing interoperability. Mm -hmm. My question now becomes this, because now we're moving into that sector of quality of experience, um, the sustainability of the, the approach and the structure of everything that you guys are working towards. Has there been any, any talks to um, establish any type of accountability or expectations uh, for the teams that are operating the other chains that you guys are uh, connecting with because everything is new right now. Everybody's excited, but we all know when it comes down to it, the things that are going to really benefit the people are going to be the things that are around, right? The things that evolve, the things that have standards and, you know, everyone's holding everyone accountable. Have you guys, I know you guys have likely been in contact with teams of other, uh, you know, blockchains and so on and so forth, but have you all put anything in place with regard to, these are the standards that we would like for you all to meet in order to make sure that this works, not just for the interim, but for the long term. Oh, yeah, 100 um, percent. Yes, we have been in talks with other chains, uh, quite a few of the top 10 chains, to be in fact. Um, likewise, uh, when you take a look, if you sign up for our developer portal uh, right now, um, majority of the projects that are being brought onto the LNX platform during this beta phase are kind of more of a, a handheld approach to it. But the way that we're designing um, the smart contracts, uh, libraries, SDKs, things like that, that developers will be able to tap into, really what it does is it sets the guardrails um, for a higher standard of um, excellence, I guess you could say that we demand certain projects to be at a certain level in order to not only be able to participate on the L1X blockchain, but also to be part, part of the L1X app to bring in their you know, widgets and things like that into it, you will have to build at a certain standard, which is something that we don't want to regulate ourselves. And But that's why we're being so meticulous on the uh, contracts that we're writing um, we have multiple contracts. Uh, um, there's one specific one that has like, it's called XFlow. It's got about, oh gosh, I think a 10 different co smart contracts that are daisy chained together to create such a unique experience that 
a developer can't really step outside of it, but they need to have access to that specific contract flow so that they can participate in the, you know, the one cent uh, L1X fee. Uh, you can participate in the L1X identity. You can participate in this and that and some other things, right? So they will have to participate in, in a, at a certain level in order to gain access. So hopefully that answers your question. No, no, it actually um, did that. I was actually really refreshing because the interoperability, you know, every, everyone's, like you said, everyone's discussing it, right? It's, it's going to be the hot thing. But with interoperability and kind of just opening up the gates without any parameters, it, it lays the foundation for bad actors, right? And a lot of mm -hmm. things that we don't want to deal with and probably don't have to get into here. But to hear that you, you referenced the guardrails, and I love the fact that you referenced the goal is not to control it. Like, we don't want any parts, but the framework is there to ensure that individuals, you know, can't get off the rails, but can still innovate and not have to compromise on what they're bringing to the table. So kudos on that. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's some very unique, interesting things that we're bringing to the L1X platform. I mentioned widgets before, right? Um, the, we're making, we're introducing this thing. Um, it, it's kind of like something that we've been working on. Um, it's a concept that I've had for, for a while, um, and I'm glad the team has grabbed a hold of it and it's running with it because I think that it will be another game changer for the way that users interact with crypto is that it's called objects. And um, this object allows you, if you've ever used like a WYSIWYG editor, uh, you'll basically, if you're not familiar with what a WYSIWYG editor is, is it's kind of like what you use on a blog um, to type in and create your blog post, right? Imagine that to be able to create NFTs, create a social post, um, create a website, create a tokenize your car, tokenize your house. Um, you create these things and then they become objects. And then you can actually create X apps where you take all these objects and you put actions behind them, right? So if I created a new post, and let's just say I wanted it to go out and, and to automatically tweet out on Twitter and on Facebook and Instagram, all for my L1X app, I can build in an action that can do that. But one of the things that we plan on doing is allowing developers to go out and create those actions for those people that can't create code or don't know how to code. They can go out and create those things and put them into like a marketplace and they can charge for them. They can get royalties off of them for every time that they're used and so on and so forth. So not only are you creating a kind of an environment to invite good actors to come in and, and make a good amount of revenue from this stuff, but also it allows you to, um, it, it starts tapping into that like no code solution uh, with a little bit of the developers coming into play as well. Um, before we go to June, um, I, I did want to, because there, there is a lot of incentive for developers uh, to begin building over there. And I, and I wanted to reiterate that you guys have a $20 million grant fund over there. Uh, for anybody who is interested in, in developing and, and learning how to develop and potentially apply for that grant, what is the easiest way for them to get in contact with someone over there and start the process? Um, we have an application on our page. Uh, if you just click on over to l1x.foundation, you'll see a thing that says build click on that link, um, uh, hover down will show like how to get started with the developer portal. And then there's a link over there that says grants. Um, that's where it was last time I checked, but it, it's pretty easy for you to find, go through, click on that. It's a simple form fill. Um, I do have to admit that there are a lot of people coming through on a daily basis, like requesting grants. Um, so, um, we are trying to get through all of the different uh, applications and, and decide, decide where we're going to be putting those funds. Yeah, and um, just mentioning that opportunity, we, we recently went through and are still going through a grants process through uh, ENS Dow. I know a lot of the builders there are building some amazing things that they could potentially look at building and may even be more advantages for them to build uh, on, on this type of blockchain rather than, again, you know, like you said, being restricted. Uh, to one environment. So, um, yeah, that opportunity is out there. Again, do your own research, not financial advice, but 
uh, yeah, there, there's more than one way to progress in the ecosystem. And sometimes that's where these blessings come from. Um, I see June with your hand up. How are you doing? Go for it. Hi, good evening. Hello. Hi. Uh, thanks for bringing me up for my question. Uh, actually, uh, I would like to know how does the pricing work? Take, for instance, uh, the ENS names. Names a four letter word is way more expensive than uh, a seven letter name. So I want to know how does the pricing work? Sorry, I don't think I heard that. There's so music asking, going on in the background. Sorry. Uh, she was asking, like, basically, how does the pricing work on the usernames? Is there a premium uh, no. based on the uh, the letter count or word count, just like there is in like ENS? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Yes. No, there is nothing like that. Okay, and also to double up on that question, uh, can a person register more than one username? Heck yeah, I've got three. I know one guy got like 10 or 15 already. Um, basically, the, the way that we're doing it right now is, is because we're trying to drive the NFT cell for the ownership of the L1X app to share in the ownership of the L1X app fees um, generated. Uh, we are giving away those usernames. And so the usernames will, uh, you, we will have a marketplace where you can turn around and sell those usernames. So if you wanted to go out and grab some name brands, you're more than welcome to, or grab names that you think people would definitely want in the future. Um, Cause those will start becoming a pretty penny for once somebody wants to clean those. All right. So there is a market for speculation. Uh, go for it, Chris. Yeah, you know, I, I, I like the innovation. Um, I want to co consider something. I want to peg what you were saying, iHeart, about Web2 uh, domains, right? Those with Web2 crypto domains. And then the innovation that CryptoNot has so eloquently laid out with regard to Layer 1X, right? Um, have you all considered, you know, because onboarding, converting individuals that are familiar with Web2 to, to Web3 has been one of the major challenges, right? Um, because again, there's there's a mindset that comes with being an avid user of or avid supporter of Web2. Um, have you all given consideration or would you give consideration, I guess I should say, to having, like you have a referral program, but for those who have Web2 platforms and Web2 domains that are crypto related, by the way, um, for them to go ahead and be incentivized to add a widget to maybe their crypto based web two platform or for it to be pegged to like the landers, like in web two, um, it's, it's a horrendous situation with a lot of great names being attached to landers. And right now, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's a thing called uh, PPC. So it, I'm not going to get too technical, but it's pay per click revenue. And that was a really big thing for web two domains in the beginning. And that revenue stream has slowed up for a lot of people. So what would you what do you think about potentially opening up something where if you have a web two crypto based domain, if you plug in a widget from layer one X, that there could be some type of incentive or referral fee. Like an example, like we we have main at blockchain dot com. If we wanted to come to layer one X and say, hey, we want to plug in a widget to this domain rather than having it connected to a lander, would there be a program that you would consider instituting that will allow that to be possible yeah i mean potentially that's what the widget is designed to do is just that anybody can go in white label it and create it as their own for their own ecosystems yeah i mean that's definitely a, a possibility likewise as i mentioned before is if you just create a simple account on the layer one uh l1x app.com uh, you get a referral link that you can attach to, you know, a button on your guys' website as well. So that's another way that you can earn from it. Uh, everybody, uh, Chris, knows. Uh, you think that would be a little too weird for crypto.it.com? I would just be begging for the lawsuit? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. long as it's not... Because Web2 needs it. I'm going to be honest with you. You know, everything that crypto not has laid out it's really, it's really innovative. You get people there and they use like buzzwords, but no, this it, it works. It just works. So no, I would definitely. If anything, that would be a name that I would use it for. 
Now that was just a joke. I, I probably would absolutely 100% get sued if I put a a, a swap on crypto.it.com. It will uh, definitely be related to IT technology and crypto and not to compete or confuse with crypto.com. But yes, uh, I love that question. That is kind of pretty much the same question I was asking. Uh, I really do look forward uh, to you guys really coming up with that kind of program because in that case, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of people that we can connect you with um, on the Web2 side that definitely have portfolios of great names that could drive some good traffic. Um, and so, yeah, that, that could be a way to help adoption and growth as well. So uh, yeah. opportunities everywhere. You guys, um, for, for those of you who have uh, uh, been here for the entire AMA, I thank you guys for being here. For those of you guys who have, are just now tapping in, uh, that's pretty much been the summary of the AMA is uh, there's a lot of opportunities for people to participate at every level, uh, both at the consumer level, at the builder level, as well as potentially the referral level um, for, you know, some the technology that we've all been wishing for, multi-chain, cross-chain interoperability, being able to take our assets and our identities and move them around this whole space of Web3 without having to deal with those basically impossible to use and costly bridges. Um, we are right at about an hour, which is uh, kind of typically where we like to leave these spaces so uh, people can consume them. Um, wanted to give you a chance to leave us with any closing alpha. And also, please let everyone know uh, where they can get started with your, uh, uh, you know, where they can get started interacting with Layer 1X. Yeah, for sure. Thanks again for having me. I appreciate it. I always love nerding out on on this kind of stuff, that's for sure. So um, yeah, to get started with L1X, if you want to purchase the coin, if you want to uh, uh, basically invest in the future of the L1X app, the ecosystem, um, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, both of those can be done through L1XApp.com. Uh, all you need to do is just connect your MetaMask and you're off to the races uh, there. Pretty self-explanatory. It's almost like a, almost very familiar to uh, an operating system. You've got your little buttons down at the bottom. Uh, I encourage you to, to uh, stake, swap, and uh, participate as much as you want. Um, likewise, if you have any questions, please jump into our Discord channel. We have some of the best mods. I'm being biased here, but I feel like we have some of the best mods in the crypto space for sure. Um, they are very tech and uh, um, forward-thinking mods, which is great. I think you got to have that in a in a crypto community. Um, and uh, yeah, so. Uh, I hope that everybody listening today has had a uh, eye opener, and uh, um, you know I always tell people that it's it's not me or anyone on my team that's really going to make the the next evolution move. Uh, we're just providing the gateway for doing that, and so hopefully somebody that's hearing my voice today uh, has been sparked with motivation to bring the next use case to crypto. Um, you know, we, I think we've done quite well with the coins. I think we've proven the, the tech with that. I, I think that we've proven uh, a few other things, but it's time to bring some new industries, new use cases into it. And I feel like L1X is definitely going to be leading the charge on that. And we encourage anyone who can hear this, hear my voice now uh, to join us as well on this journey. Yeah, I'm, I definitely want to thank you for coming on and sharing. As I said, a, a lot of people are going to listen back to this space. And they've got a lot of intellectual people in, in the communities that I belong to. They'll listen back to the space and they're going to realize that you, you've really laid out a, 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 a pretty bullish uh, uh, roadmap. And uh, your project is definitely one I, I know people are going to be interested in digging into. Uh, again, just to remind everybody, always do your own research. Join their community, learn more from them. Um, yeah, um, looking forward to seeing what you guys continue to build um, and participating in the future. Like I said, I do have my username, so I am now a participant and owner, uh, I suppose, in the revenue stream. Uh, you will likely see the swap on our website because we do believe that it is uh, important to have an easy outlet, uh, again, for people to be able to swap tokens. Um, and yeah, uh, Again, we do these AMAs to introduce people to the tech that we feel is going to help grow the space. These are This is what you'll be using your digital identity to interact with. Um, as always, as I stated at the beginning of the, uh, of the spaces, our spaces are recorded, so you can listen back to this at your own leisure here on Twitter or in our contact archive at link3.po 
forward slash DeFi wallet. Uh, we will have this up along with a blog post to accompany it at iHeartDomains.com in about a day or so. And on our podcast, which will be in every major podcast player, including Apple and Spotify. Um, our next AMA is going to be on Wednesday with Collabland, and it is going to be a big one. So I invite all of you guys to join us for that one. And yes, again, I thank you so very much, both the uh, Layer 1X team uh, and Cody, uh, a.k.a. Crypto Knot, uh, for you guys coming on and dropping all this alpha. Thank you for everybody coming on the stage and ans- asking those amazing questions. Um, and yeah, uh, please join their groups, ask the info if you like it. You got an opportunity to get on the alpha and in the platform early. We're about to roll into this bull market. This season is about opportunities. Uh, so, yeah, we're going to do our best to present to you as many as we can. Uh, thank you again. If anybody has any last words, go for it, Chris. Go for it, Crypto Not. Let's say our beast. Thanks. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. So, it, it was a great sure. one. Well, yeah. And with that, you guys enjoy your weekend. Uh, And yeah, I will see you guys on Wednesday. Uh, Have a blessed day. And thank you again.